All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out the Rich Chalenza Show. I think what I'm going to call this podcast is Try Not to Overeat. (laughs) And the reason I bring this up is because I was a horrible eater when I was younger, and then I became a glutton when I got older. And I was actually, they just opened up in Orlando, Florida, a Portillo's, which is one of my favorite beef joints that I grew up with at a very young age out of Chicago and they had two in Tampa that we'd visit and now they have one in Orlando and they've only been open a few days and I've already been there twice or they brought me food home from there twice and they're not even open they're having a soft opening before a soft opening publicly and out of a fluke my stepkids went and saw that there was some action around there and then they went the other day and they said oh you're one of our first customers we're doing a very soft soft opening we're just testing things you know, they went through the drive through and they served them. And then today, my girlfriend won again for me. And not only did I eat a big beef, I ate half of her other big beef, which, again, overeating. And I think a lot of people have a problem with overeating. I, I don't know how to... I'm, I'm going to kind of just give you my breakdown of this because I think a lot of life comes down to portion control, obviously. It's not just what you're eating. I do think for the most part, a lot of us can eat what we want and still live a healthy life or at least, um, I can't say really, it could be a healthy life, but just maintain a certain weight regardless if you work out or not and live, you know, and just live a very long life. My grandmother and grandparents lived very long lives. They weren't in the, you know, necessarily athletic by any means, didn't work out, but uh, some of them drank, some smoked and a lot of immigrant Uh, I should say, that I had, uh, and family members and friends that lived long lives that never again worked out. Uh, But one of the things I think, especially from my European or ones that were raised by immigrant parents, is a lot of them weren't nearly as obese as people are now, especially in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and even 2000s. But now I'm starting to see a lot of people really overweight. And I, at one time, was a weird kind of overweight. I was very big. I was around 247, 250 pounds, but I worked out like a madman. Uh, I was very, I had low body fat kind of for one, a lot of areas, but I, w- I did have a belly on me. Uh, like a lot of guys that worked out that are hardcore into it. You probably see them in the gym. They're kind of jacked everywhere. My legs were shredded. My arms were shredded, my chest, my back, and then I had this belly. And that belly got pretty damn big after a while. And I know I was known for eating. And I think one of the things when it comes to overeating is it becomes a part of our identity. And especially if you have friends, family members, and colleagues that like food too, you all just become a commodity. Uh, I, I forgot the word there. I might have screwed it up. But it's like a family. Like you're always talking about food. You're always going to different places to eat food. And I still do this. Believe me, I'm doing all these things still. Uh, but I had to back up on the portion control. And I still eat a lot. I'm not going to lie. But I see a lot of people I'm around too really overeating. And I think also over drinking. And I'm not talking liquor necessarily. I'm talking kind of beer. Maybe even a lot of wine as well. And drinking a lot of soda or pop. Uh, those type of things I don't think people realize in the long term how much weight that puts on you. Now, I was known also for somebody who had weight fluctuating issues. I have another cousin. I have an uncle and a cousin that goes through this as well, where literally you'd see me. I'd be 220. You see me in two months, I'm 250. Then you see me three months later, I may be 215. Who the hell knows with me? I was fluctuating at times that much because I'm genetically supposed to be a lot thinner. A lot of my family members were all very thin. And it also came down to, honestly, money and time and effort when I was lifting weights. If I was in the mood for a few months to get really big, then I knew I had to spend a lot of money. Not only that, I had to eat a lot of meals. Not only that, I had to poop a lot. Not only that, I had to lift heavy weights. So other times I'd be like, you know what? I am not in the mood to go through that. So I I think people really underestimate if you want to build muscle, uh, how much time and effort that really takes. A lot of people only think about the effort when it comes to people losing weight. Like, oh, you had to sacrifice. You had to go on this diet and all that. I found it a lot easier in the long run to lose weight than it was to gain weight. You know, it's just for me genetically, but I also think a lot of people just get extreme. They go on diets they don't want to go on. 
and I've discussed this before, and they just, um, it's just really hard for people to lose weight too sometimes because they don't want to give up their food. Uh, their food is a big part of their culture. Uh, they have a certain type of food they like to eat, a certain amount of food. They have uh, a lot of things that they, you know, they have challenges with. But I am going to sit here and just tell you, you know, if you really do want to lose weight, uh, it really, I believe, portion control. And I also believe the times of the day you're eating. Because, you know, I when I went to even Italy, or I, when I grew up around a lot of Italians, you know, you think of Italians... And you think, oh my God, all this food. But I'm going to tell you, a lot of Italians are not fat or obese. I'm going to tell you right now, especially if you go to Italy. They have those European style bodies. They're very thin European cuts, they call them, even in the clothing and the apparel industry. Their arms are thin. Their waists are thin. uh, And they eat. And they eat. And the way they eat is very interesting. I'm not going to sit there and start describing everything. You probably know. But it's kind of interesting when you go to Europe and see a lot of Italians, how much they eat. But the way they eat, and also compared to the way Italians eat, say here, Chicago, New York, Boston, it could be Philly, it could be anywhere. And how we look different. Uh, we're much heavier. And I also think when it comes to like even, again, Porsche controls, and you see Italians, it's, it's a certain amount of pasta, not a ton of pasta like here, for instance. And also the kind of things they put on, say their salads, they're very natural and things are very light. A lot of seafood, a lot of foods that really are um, natural, I guess you could say. Here, I get a lot of things are made differently of things, but I really think people have to understand that portion control is huge. Just you backing up maybe a little will go such a long way. You eating, and again, I like eating late at night, and I've done that throughout my life. Uh, But again, if it's hurting you, it may not work for you. Maybe eating a little earlier or maybe exercising after you eat. And, um, yeah, just really not everyone, and I'm going to wrap it up with this. I say it all the time, has a different lifestyle, different genetics, eats different foods and all those things. You may, not only do you love, keep eating whatever the hell you want to eat. I'm not telling you how to change that, but you may want to try different foods. All right. Incorporating maybe more vegetables or more fruits or just, just living a different kind of I guess lifestyle, I can't say lifestyle, different foods that maybe you weren't eating before that are very healthy, just kind of incorporating them throughout the month, slowly but surely. Again, I'm not here to change anybody's identity when it comes to food, but I do think a lot of people keep eating the same foods and they want to lose weight. And even sometimes when you back up on the portions, you may not be losing weight. Uh, So you have to take, you know, another step. And again, you, you, if you want to work out or do something physical, that's wonderful. I always would recommend that. But it could be as simple as walking maybe more or as simple as, uh, again, not going extreme on a diet that you're not going to you know, stick with for the rest of your life or stick with just in general, but just experimenting and trying different things and not being programmed to say, hey, if I eat this way uh, at this point in time, then it's going to really work for me. And right now, like the Cato diet's in. And years ago, it was the South Beach diet. And then it was Atkins. And then it's all this shit. You, I, you could test whatever you want to test. But I just think when it comes to taking care of your body, what you eat, nutrition, you got to make it work specifically for you. But you got to pay attention. And really pay attention as you get older because all that weight, and I just did a podcast on this, the weight you're gaining or the weight you're holding on to, the older you get, the harder it is sometimes to lose that weight and get that off of you. And you just got to really take care of yourself. But just really make sure you're not overeating. I think a lot of us don't realize we are, even if you go for desserts, like if you go to Dairy Queen, are you getting a large cone or a small? Are you getting a banana split or are you getting a small sundae? When you order your, you know, a burger, are you getting a double or a triple, not a single? Uh, you know, I'm just using these for example. When you're ordering a steak, can you get a fillet? You know, maybe something smaller instead of the big tomahawk or bone-in ribeye. Now, if you want to celebrate, that's different. But I'm just using, you know, examples of what you're doing. Uh, instead of one bowl of cereal, you may do two or three. Instead of getting a smaller size smoothie, for instance, if you want that, that you know has a lot of sugar, you're getting the largest one. Uh, same with, again, I'll wrap it up with this and I get this too. Like I love pop. I love Coke. I like root beer too, 
but I try, I've been definitely trying to back down on my sizes and even my lattes, uh, my cappuccinos, because I, it, really the rush comes the first few minutes having that sip. But sometimes I get bigger sizes, but for the most part, I've been backing that down because I'm looking at if I get a large Coke somewhere, you know, and I do that X amount of times per month, that's a lot. You know what I mean? If I just back that up a little bit and look at the month, I've consumed half or a third compared to what I normally you know, consume. And that can go for anything you're eating if you keep backing up a little bit. If you just cut your meals in half for now, you may be hungry at the beginning. Now, if, that's, if you cut your meals in half and you're still starving, I get it. That's probably maybe not for you. Maybe if you cut it into a third. But in this case, I'm just saying if you lost, if you cut half your food in half at the end of the month, even the end of the year, that's half the amount of calories you consumed. So that's kind of how I look at things. I am by no means a nutritionist specialist. I just try to simplify everything when I'm trying to either lose weight or gain weight. Uh, But in this case, just make sure you're not overeating or... Yeah, and here's the thing. If you want, a lot of people talk about how to save money, right? And all these things with money. And if you back up at Starbucks, you know, you'll save $5 a day times it by the end of the year. If you back up on this product and you stop shopping and buying this, 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 this. Most people, I think for a lot of people, not most, but a lot of people don't realize how much extra money they're spending on food that they don't need to. They're also eating a lot of times when they don't need to either. But when it comes to groceries, I don't, even Sam's, I think people buy portions or too much. They waste a lot or they spend a lot more on groceries. If you really want to save money, man, I'm telling you right now, maybe back up. And here's me. I'm telling you this and I eat out constantly. But what people don't realize when I eat out is I kind of find specific spots. So it's almost like the money I spend eating out a lot of times. It could be a, an Italian cafe or a French cafe or all these places. It wouldn't have been much more much more than if I went to this grocery store and literally brought all the products. If I order even a BLT, I didn't have to buy all those products. But if you back up on your groceries and just kind of buy, I'm not telling you to go shop every day, not like a European, but maybe shop every two, three days and stay out of places like, and I don't mean to dismiss Costco, but stay out of places where every time you walk in, you're spending two, three hundred dollars. Now, if you have a family, that's a whole different thing. I'm talking about you individually. Even I live in Florida, so going to Publix, Uh, Going to these stores and really spending a lot of money on food, only going really shopping two, three days ahead of time or four, getting specifically what you need too. So instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to shop for the whole week, saying, you know what, I'm going to eat this, I'm going to do this, 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 you'll be like, you'll probably only spend like $50, $60, $80 or $70 compared to when you go in every six, seven days and you spend $250. That's just a trick I do. And even when going out, I really kind of pinpoint... And, you know, different times if you want to go during happy hours or you want to go where there's a special or where there, you know, I don't like coupons, but, you know, some restaurants and things will be like, I know to hit them at lunch because it's a third of the price than if I eat dinner there. And I know at certain times, you know, just what works for me, just put a little more time and effort into that because you could save thousands of dollars when it comes to uh, saving money with groceries or eating out or any of those type of things, just food in general. All right. That's all I got for you today. If you want to know more, I kind of teach men how to master their self-confidence. So if you have any problems actually with fitness, wellness, health, I give my two cents. That does not mean I'm a professional trainer or a nutritionist. That is not my thing. But I definitely take uh, an honest approach, I think. And I've been working out my entire life. And I think I take a totally different perspective than most people when it comes to all these different types of things. And I also get into wardrobe, hygiene, fashion, many different things. So that's masteringselfconfidence.com. So if you have any questions or comments, hit me up. Take care.